This video is mainly for those who have been left behind following the event commonly referred to by Christians as the Rapture. However, if you are fortunate enough to be watching this before that happens, take this video as a warning and accept Jesus as your Savior now so as not to be left behind. If you have been left behind, you are in great danger both physically and spiritually. This video is a message to you that you will not become a victim of the spiritual danger that is coming. What is the rapture? 1 Thessalonians 4, 13-18 But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 1 Corinthians 15, 51-54 Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. These two passages describe an event commonly called the rapture, which means a catching away. This event indicates that someday Jesus is going to return to earth to take those who know him as Savior to be with him. Those who have died will be resurrected from the dead, and those who are living will be changed, both taking on incorruptible and immortal bodies and taken into heaven to be with Jesus. There are several ways this event could play out. We could just disappear, leaving clothes and other items behind with no other evidence of what happened other than vehicles going out of control. We could disappear, leaving clothes and other items behind, and the graves of those resurrected would be opened so that the resurrection could be seen. The resurrected dead could appear alive to the world with their graves opened, followed by all believers simply disappearing. We could be visibly changed, and the resurrected dead could appear alive to the world with their graves opened before we disappear. It is also possible that rather than disappearing, we could be seen to rise to meet the Lord in the air. The specific scenario mainly affects how it will affect people on earth and how explaining it away will be attempted. Regardless of the specific scenario, living Christians will be taken away and dead ones will be raised from the dead and taken as well. Not everyone who claims to be a Christian will be caught away since there are many false Christians around, many of which have been deceived and many others who are the ones doing the deceiving. There will probably be many famous preachers who will be left behind, including the Pope. In fact, the rapture may go unnoticed at the Vatican until someone sees a news report about millions of people from around the world missing. The simple fact is that no matter how religious you are, and no matter how often you go to church, unless you have believed on Jesus, repenting of your sin, and accepting Jesus as your Savior, you will be left behind. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3-8 Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he has God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity does already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and so destroy with the brightness of his coming. Revelation 3, 7 through 11. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things say he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key, of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, 
and no man can shut. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet, to know that I love thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwelleth upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. These verses, as well as others, indicate the rapture will occur just prior to what the Bible calls the time of Jacob's trouble. This seven-year period is commonly known as the tribulation and is the time of great judgment on the world by God. The common name of this time has been used for an erroneous attack on the pre-time of Jacob's trouble rapture because of its more common the claim is made that the pre-tribulation rapture teaches that there will be no tribulation or persecution preceding the catching away of believers. This is a straw man since no one preaches such a thing. The claim is based on confusing the term the tribulation for plain old tribulation. While it is true that this attitude has existed in countries as the United States where religious freedom has existed, it is only because until recently it has been hard to see such persecution coming. However, in recent years, the possibility has become more obvious. That said, the Bible clearly teaches that Jesus is coming to catch away those who believe in him as Savior, and all indications are that it will be very soon. When this happens, those who do not know Jesus as their Savior will be left behind to face the worst seven years of earth history. And your odds of surviving all seven years are not good. However, when this happens, those who know Jesus as their Savior will be called away by Jesus to be with him and will not go through the seven-year period. If these events have not happened yet, then you still can avoid the time of Jacob's trouble by believing on Jesus, repenting of your sin, and accepting Jesus as your Savior. God has made it so simple that there is no excuse. To learn how to accept Jesus as your Savior, visit our salvation video. If these events have happened, then you are in grave danger both spiritually and physically. The time of Jacob's trouble will be the worst time in human history as God's judgments poured out on the world. It is so horrible that it is commonly referred to as the tribulation, and your odds of getting through all seven years are not good. Furthermore, the greatest spiritual danger in all of history will occur during this time as the world government of the Antichrist demands that the world worship him as God and take his mark. The first thing you need to do is accept Jesus as your Savior. That is, believe that Jesus is God in the flesh, died for your sin, repent of your sin, and accept Jesus as your Savior. Do not delay. If the rapture has already occurred, every moment you wait, you are at risk of being deceived by the lie that is coming or being killed by what is coming on the earth. Once you accept Jesus as Savior, you should get a copy of the King James Bible. By the way, following the rapture, there will be plenty of free copies in the abandoned homes of King James Bible-believing Christians that have been called away to be with the Lord. First of all, do not delay in accepting Jesus as your Savior. Waiting puts you in grave spiritual danger. You should also make plans for telling others about Jesus and how to accept him, as well as how to survive the next seven years. If the rapture has already occurred, there are some things that you should not do, because doing so will endanger your soul. First of all, do not delay in accepting Jesus as your Savior. Waiting puts you in grave spiritual danger. Second, do not be deceived by whatever other explanation for the rapture that may be put forth, no matter how plausible it sounds. 2 Thessalonians 2, 8-12 And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivable unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they might be damned, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. This suggests that those who believe in Jesus would be protected by God, so believing in Jesus will serve as protection against being deceived by this lie. These verses speak of a strong delusion following the rapture that will be so strong that it could potentially deceive those who believe in Jesus. Matthew 24, 24 does not say that it actually will. This suggests that those who believe in Jesus would be protected by God, so believing in Jesus will serve as protection against being deceived by this lie. 
Revelation 13, 16. And he calleth us all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Revelation 14, 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receiveth his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast, his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. This mark is what is commonly referred to as the mark of the beast. Note that it says, in their right hand or in their forehead, not on. That makes it consistent with an implantable RFD chip. This technology is being tested today and could surely be used in just such a mandate. The fact that this is the first time in history that it is possible to see how this can be fulfilled shows the rapture is not far off. This brings us to the biggest don't of the time of Jacob's trouble. Whatever you do, do not, I say again, do not take this mark. Taking this mark will not just endanger your soul, but damn you to hell forever. These verses are quite clear that taking the mark of the beast is a guaranteed one-way ticket to hell. In fact, it is the one thing that a saint of this time can do to lose their salvation. Now, it will not be easy because you will not be able to buy and sell without it, and you could be arrested and executed for not having the mark. However, no matter what, you must not take the mark. If you have accepted Jesus as your Savior and die, you'll be in heaven, but take the mark and you will go to hell. So do not, I say again, do not take the mark. If you are reading this after the rapture, what is coming is without question the worst period in history. This time is called in the Bible, the time of Jacob's trouble, and it is commonly referred to as the tribulation. It is a time when God is pouring out his wrath on the world prior to Jesus coming to set up his kingdom on earth. What's coming are three sets of seven judgments. The seal judgments, the coming of the Antichrist, Revelation 6, 1 through 2, war, Revelation 6, 3 through 4, scarcity and inflation, Revelation 6, 5 through 6, death, Revelation 6, 7 through 8, martyrs for Christ, Revelation 6, 9 through 11, a great earthquake, Revelation 6, 12 through 17, ending with a half hour of silence in heaven in Revelation 8, 1. Next are the trumpet judgments, which are hail fire with blood, Revelation 8, 7, a mountain being cast into the sea, which is probably an asteroid impact, Revelation 8, 8 through 9, wormwood falls, the description of which suggests a comet impact, Revelation 8, 10 through 11, a third of the sun and moon darkened, Revelation 8, 12 through 13, the bottomless pit open, Revelation 9, 1 through 12. Four inches loose from the Euphrates, Revelation 9, 13 through 21. Ending with the declaration of Jesus coming, Revelation 11, 15 through 19. Thirdly, there's the bowls, judgments. These include sores on those with the mark of the beast, Revelation 16, 2. The sea becoming blood, Revelation 6, 3. Rivers becoming blood, Revelation 16, 4. Men scorched by the sun, Revelation 16, 8 through 9. Darkness, Revelation 16, 10 through 11. The Euphrates dries up, Revelation 16, 1. And the finale, in Revelation 16, 17 through 21. These three groups of judgments are discussed separately, but there are some parallels that suggest that they are fulfilled alongside each other. Although some teach that they are sequential, that is, seal, trumpets, and then bowls, the parallels suggest that they are fulfilled alongside each other, including the mountain falling into the sea alongside the sea becoming blood. This event is probably an asteroid impact in the sea and its side effects. The description of wormwood sounds like a comet impact on a third of the rivers alongside rivers turning to blood. These judgments are going to kill a lot of people. In fact, most of those left behind at the rapture I'm not going to survive the seven years of the time of Jacob's trouble. The fact is, if you're reading this following the rapture, the odds of surviving the next seven years are quite small. However, if you accept 
Jesus as your Savior, and do not take the mark of the beast. Even if you are killed, you will go to heaven. So the peril that is coming on the world makes accepting Jesus as your Savior imperative. Revelation 11, 3-7 And I will give power unto my two witnesses, that they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, devouring their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut up heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over water to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. And when they shall finish their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. Revelation 11, 8-12 And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put into graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because... These two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven, saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up into heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Malachi 4, 4 through 6. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Matthew 17, 1-3 And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. These two witnesses are Moses and Elijah. Malachi 4, 4 through 6 indicates Elijah is coming back. The reference to Moses in verse 4 suggests he is part of it. Moses and Elijah also appeared together with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, Matthew 17, 1 through 3. Also, when you look at the signs mentioned in Revelation 11, 5, they parallel those of Moses and Elijah. Thanks to TV and the internet, we can see live events from all over the world. I personally have seen men walk on the moon as they did it. Therefore, seeing two dead bodies in Jerusalem is nothing today. During that three and a half days, the world will celebrate their deaths. After three and a half days, they will be resurrected before all the world and called up into heaven. Revelation 7, 1 through 4. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried aloud to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we seal the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Revelation 7, 5-8 through 8. Of, of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Gad were sealed, 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed, 12,000. Of the tribe of Nephilim were sealed, 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh which sealed, 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed, 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed, 12,000. Of the twelve of Issachar which sealed, 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulon were sealed, 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed, 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed, 12,000. Revelation 14, 1-5 And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name 
written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, has a voice of many waters, and has a voice of great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping on their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts, and the elders. And no man could learn the song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they were without fault before the throne of God. This is a reference to 144,000 Jewish preachers who will preach the gospel around the world. They will be sealed in the foreheads as a way of protecting them during their ministry from danger. They will be men who are virgins, with 12,000 being taken from each tribe of Israel. These 144,000 Jewish preachers will preach the gospel of Jesus in the coming kingdom to Jews and Gentiles around the world. They help win the nation of Israel to their Messiah. In the process, many Gentiles, that is non-Jews, will be won to Jesus as well. Revelation 19, 11 through 15. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treads out the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Revelation 19, 16-21 and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he said with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat on the, the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Revelation 20, 1-4 And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, and in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now for the happy ending. At least it is happy for those who put their trust in Jesus. It will be the worst possible ending for the Antichrist and those that follow him taking the mark. Jesus will come from heaven on a white horse, with those of us who were taken in the rapture following him on white horses. At this point, in what can only be called the ultimate in desperation, in defiance of God, the Antichrist will actually try to attack the Lord as he comes. This foolhardy effort will be responded to by the entire army of the Antichrist, being slaughtered with a single word from Jesus. Then the Antichrist and his false prophet will be taken by Jesus and cast alive into the lake of fire. Meanwhile, the devil will be bound for a thousand years, and Jesus will reign over the entire world from Jerusalem. This will be a golden age to end all golden ages. Regardless of which side of the rapture you are on, you need to accept Jesus as your Savior now. 
Do not delay. Once you have done that, you need to live for the Lord. If the rapture has already occurred, then you need a plan for surviving the next seven years. The odds are against you, but you should have a plan for obtaining food, water, clothing, shelter. Some form of cooperation with fellow believers will be needed. This will also help produce a means to effectively spread the gospel to the world during the horrendous persecution that is coming. Once you have accepted Jesus as your Savior, it is important that you spend time reading the Bible and praying. These are important to your spiritual growth. Without prayer and Bible reading, the temptation to take the mark of the beast will be hard to resist. It is also a good idea to find some good preaching. However, most good preaching online when the rapture occurs will probably in the near future be taken down, so you may want to record or download as much as you can while it is still available. Two critical things, first of all, is accepting Jesus as your Savior. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, added to this is not taking the mark of the beast. The seven years of the time of Jacob's trouble will be the hardest time to live on earth, and survival is not likely. However, knowing Jesus as your Savior will ensure that you will go to heaven if you don't survive. Finally, be sure to keep the faith and trust Jesus Christ to get you through what is ahead, even if you lose your life on earth. With Jesus as your Savior, you will live on in heaven, and God can even use that to win others to himself.